start this recording. So today is September 14th, Monday, and we are getting rolling. All right, first one from my niece. A Facebook account that I bought on Fiverr got locked. I've already created a Facebook page for one of my money sites using that profile. That Facebook page has a link to my website and also several posts published. It also comes up in Google search when I search for the brand name. Should I just create a new Facebook page from another account? Or should I better wait some time at creating a new page immediately? Middle suspicious to Google. Uh, Twitter and Pinterest accounts for that money split and work fine. Um, no, I would just create another one. Uh, I, don't, I don't think you have to wait any time. I need something that's a problem. I wouldn't worry about that at all. From Craig, I recently got a few high PA Tumblr blogs. Each Tumblr blog has a PA of greater than 30 with a DA of 99. I will theme each Tumblr blog to a specific topic in the backlinks for each. Tumblr blog look good in Open Site Explorer. Question, do these Tumblr blogs deliver the same sort of link to use as a PBN with a similar PA above 30? What's the difference? I, I've never really used Tumblr, Craig, so I honestly can't compare the two. You'd have to talk to someone that's actually used them. I know Derek has. I've never really got into using uh, the expired Tumblrs or you know, the high DA Tumblrs and all that. I'll mix them in a little bit, but I don't have any testing data where I specifically do those to see how they move stuff. So I, I'm, I'm not sure on that one. All right, next one from my niece again. I've watched all affiliate training. I want to build a siloed affiliate site. I'm wondering, should I try to get an exact match domain and then build various silos related and unrelated to the, that keyword? As I want to cover many keywords, or should I go for a totally unrelated domain name? I'm a beginner, and I'm wondering how important is the exact match domain, and is it still as important as when Mike was recording the training video? Some of those videos are more than a year old. Maybe for a siloed site, it's better not to have an exact match domain. Um, I more use exact match domains for smaller topics, I niece. Um, so, I mean, usually in my case, if I, if I was going to silo something out, it's going to be, a, you know, a lot of topics. I'm not going to really do that on an exact match domain. I mean, there could be certain cases. Let me bring up Notepad. Because, I mean, it really depends on the niche and, like, where you're going with it, I think. You know, um, like, you could have something like electronic cigarette reviews.com. Um, and that could target, you know, a whole bunch of – the home page, I guess, could target, like, electronic cigarette review type keywords. And then you could have silos for, you know, like um, – you could do like vaporizers, you know, e-liquids, uh, vape pens. These will be your silos, obviously. And you could do stuff like that because that's kind of all under this topic right here. But a lot of time, it's going to be hard to do that. I mean, this is a pretty different example. So, I mean, it really depends on, on what, what the keyword is. And if it makes sense to go outside of that specific topic, you know what I mean? So if you have something like, um, let me think of a product name. Let's say there was a product called like Better Abs in six days. And this is an actual product name. Okay, and you went you had an EMD for it. Better Abs in six days dot com. Let's say this is a product name. For me, I personally wouldn't like pick a domain name like this where I'm going over this this topic on the main 
on the home page and then doing like, you know, like different silos inside. I would just keep it on this topic because that's kind of small. It's a smaller, it's, it's one product. Whereas electronic cigarette reviews, I mean, that, that, that can expand. So to me, it depends on what the keyword is and how far it can expand if it makes sense. But I wouldn't do something unnatural like this where it's like a product name for the EMD and then you expand into other stuff that kind of doesn't really make much sense for that domain name. That's just the way I like doing it. And you definitely do not need an EMD to, to rank fine uh, for those keywords. I mean, I have a lot of sites out there that are not EMDs that are ranking great. So for me, for that question, it all depends on the keyword, whether I'm going to use an EMD or not. Right, there was a Facebook post at that address that is liked and commented by many OMGers, but I do not see any comments from the OMG coaches. The post says that there is something called WebRTC that is reporting your real IP addresses, even if you're using proxies. Are you aware of this, and is it something we should take care of? I haven't seen this in any OMG training yet, but I'm, maybe I'm missing something. I'm using Firefox with proxies when I work with PBNs, and I use CC Cleaner. I mean, I just use um, Internet Explorer. No proxies, and I've, I haven't had any problems. I need, I'll look into that post, uh, but I, I haven't had any problems myself with it. All right, if a PBM passes the penalty check, is it pretty much safe to link to the client site, or at least to a Web 2.0? I mean, as far as a penalty, like you know, like a spam penalty. For the most part, yes, uh, but there's a reason we tell a lot of people to link to Web 2.0, like, you know, like social properties first, because if you link to directly to the client site and you get the anchor text wrong, you know, you over-optimize or anything like that, that can cause problems that are pretty hard to fix. So, you know, that's, uh, it's safe as far as, like, you know, you're not really going to get, a, like, a pass a spam penalty as long as you have all your footprints covered, but you could you could be unsafe from other stuff, which is why we want beginner type people to be linking to social property type stuff first, build up the authority of the site, and then maybe later on when they're comfortable, they can link to the money site directly. Is it not okay anymore to use link choose keeper? Should it be avoided? I heard rumors about PBNs being DNX because link choose keeper. I see the webinar replay in my section, Sebastian. The, the the question webinar I did, the frequently asked question webinar, we actually broke it up into sections, and this this question is in there. So go to my section, uh, right on the main page for my section, Greg's coaching session. There's a video of the FAQ webinar, and below the video is all the timestamps of where the most commonly asked questions are. This is one of them, so I cover that in detail in there. from Steve regarding needing different hosting accounts for our PBN. So if we have one money site and 25 different PBN sites that all link to the same money site, do we therefore need 26 different hosting accounts for, for each site? Thanks. That's the way I do it, Steve. Um, just to be extra safe. I mean, you could do like, you know, if you had 25 PBNs and then you need like a 26th, you could, like, if you had already had a HostGator account, you could do another one on a HostGator account, but it just couldn't be under the same IP. Because, I mean, HostGator is so big that there's no, it's not low probability of getting two links from HostGator type sites. But we usually just switch it up just to make it easier. You know, you're, you're, you're really varying out, getting links from different hosts. It just, it just eliminates a lot of footprints. But, I mean, technically, no is the answer to your question, but... Yes, that's that's pretty much what we do. It seems there are two ways to deliver power to a money site using PBNs or DAS. You seem to be an expert in PBNs and use them expertly. Is the DAS method for delivering power to a money site the same in effect as a PBN? Or is there a time it is best you best to use PBNs at and a time it is best to use DAS? 
Um, I mean, for me personally, I pretty much use all PBN stuff. I don't really use DAS as much. Um, I mean, the, the biggest form of DAS that I use is just linking to my social properties, which I wouldn't even really call DAS, uh, me personally. But, I mean, I would just talk to people who, who use DAS, and because and, I know Derek uses both. You can see when you can ask him when he uses one, when he uses the other. But for me personally, I just use PBNs, and I have absolutely no problem doing that. So, if we search Emergency Bull Repair Philadelphia, we see a big YouTube video thumbnail. How do we achieve that? Yeah, that's one of my old examples. It should even show without emergency, actually. So, we're talking about this big video here. Um... Let me see if it shows about emergency. That's showing small with that version. Sometimes it'll go big with that version. That's small with that version. So it looks like it's only with the emergency in there right now. But we haven't figured out totally what that is, um, why it shows like that, but we think it might be something with the phone number showing in the anchor text. We've never messed with it a ton. Um, I think someone mentioned something about like the phone number in the title being shown in the anchor text. I, I don't know. We never exactly figured out what made that happen. Um, but you can always go and analyze the video links and see what's going on there. This is actually a gig we used. Uh, we just used SeaWork Service from a while ago. I don't remember putting the phone number in the anchor text, though. So I don't know if that's right or not. It's only showing five backlinks now. Yeah, it's nothing special there. There could be lost links still in effect, though. You know, when you lose a link, it uh, it stays in effect for a while. But, yeah, we never figured out exactly why that happened and that you don't see it happen much anymore. So, you know, maybe I'll have to look more into that. It could have something to do with the actual video on page, too. I don't know. We'll have to look further into that. I'll have to ask around, uh, see if anyone ever dove into that more. But I never figured that out exactly. All right, from Thierry. Hey, Greg, I think with that, when you see the following message in the description in the Google index, when looking for PBN, it's fine, right? just means that the domain is expired. Find cash advance, debt solution, and more X. Yes. Yeah, that's fine, Thierry. That just means it's expired. Is it okay to use a PBN and repurpose it to use it as a money site if all the metrics, links, et cetera, are good? Yes, that is mainly brand aggregate, et cetera. Uh, I mean, yeah, it works, Steve, but we don't we don't recommend it to the like the general community just because there's stuff that can go wrong. You know, if you miss something that you're starting with a site that's not going to work for you, but yeah, it still works, and I still do it in certain situations. Do you recommend using TB Solutions for buying PBN domains? I've never used them, Dave, so I can't recommend them. If I have a site that has an inner page, but I'd rather have Google show another page for that same keyword, is there an easy way to switch this? I've been trying to de-optimize that page and send links to the page I want to rank instead. Is there an easier way without completely deleting the page that is already ranking? If you have a site that has an inner page, but I'd rather have Google show another page.
Well, currently they're seeing the page that's being shown is better optimized for that keyword, obviously. Um, so it depends if you need to keep that page or not, I would say. Uh, if you do, just keep it and totally deoptimize it. If you don't, you could three or one, delete it and three or one it to the page you want to rank. Uh, I mean, I was sending any links there, but it depends on your situation, what you're trying to do. But if, I mean, if you don't want that page to rank for that keyword, just totally de-optimize it for that keyword. You know, take out that keyword totally, and it, it won't rank for it eventually. It might take some time, but. Do you know of a WordPress plugin that will hide the list of plugins on a site from Google? Is this important to do? Does it matter if you will see what plugins are used on a WordPress site? Um, I think Stephen Floyd uses a high WP, it's called. But I, I don't, I've never used that, Craig. Can you switch languages on one single PBN to link out to different money sites in English and in other languages? I've never done it, Sebastian, but I don't see why it would be a problem the way that Google works. But again, I've personally never done that. Remember when you're saying there is a footprint problem with network solutions as it uses perfect privacy LLC? What exactly is the problem? Is the same with name chiefs who is Gore Protection? Um, <coughs> yeah, I mean, just my problem was having too many sites with that one there. Um, and then also, recently they had something where they were showing the customer number uh, on some of my sites. Even though I had perfect privacy, they're showing the customer number of the person that owned that account. So whether it was privacy protected or not, there was a footprint because if I have three sites from Network Solutions linked to, to my money site, not only do they say Perfect Privacy LLC, which is you know just part of Network Solutions pretty much and Register.com and maybe one other, but also it could be showing the same customer number, uh, which which makes no point for who is protection because that identifies who the account is about for Google, or who the account's to for Google. You know, it's all the same customer, three different sites pointing to the same money site. So that's just another problem that came up recently, which I just don't use them at all anymore. I have a money site and a PBN on the same shared hosting account. Is this okay as long as they don't link to each other? Uh, yeah, that's fine, Jamie. Is the root domain... And subdomain have these metrics which to choose. Do we go with higher trust flow or a higher PA or expected to trust flow? Um, see, see my Q&A webinar video. Uh, Dave, I have a question specifically for something like that. If you have hundreds of PBNs on WordPress, do you always update to the latest WordPress versions and update plugins? How do you manage all of that? For me personally, guys, when I'm logging into the PBN, I'll update it. You know, if I log into the PBN for any reason, I'll update it. If I'm not logging in, some of them have uh, automatic update stuff on them. Uh, when you set up WordPress, there's options where you can you can go to the advanced options and choose for them to automatically update. Some I set up like that. Some I just leave unupdated. I mean, I just kind of mix it up. That's just my way of doing it. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. It's just how I always done it. When you are planning out your anchor text on a new site in your example videos, are the links that are sending with those anchor text all PBNs or a mix of links such as blog comments, press release, etc.? What type of backlinks are you usually starting with on a new site? So usually what I'm picking, David, is my PBN links. Um, and for me, it depends on, again, if it's a client site or a, an affiliate site. For me, a lot of my affiliate sites, I'll send all PBNs directly to the money site. If it's a client site, I won't do that because I want them to be completely safe. You know, if it's an affiliate site for me, I don't care as much about losing it. Um, and I'll do a mix of all types of links, David. Uh, depending on what it is, you know, if it's a client site, I'm usually going to do social first. Uh, I might do a press release, but usually I'm going to do social citations, stuff like that first. Then I'll boost up my social and citations. 
before I do anything, get the trust of the site going. If it's an affiliate site, for me, I usually send PBNs directly to the money site. So it depends on what type of site it is and what I'm going to do. But a lot of times when you see the anchor text that I'm doing, I'm talking about the PBN stuff. Give me one second, guys. All right, Kyle, on silo structure, do you think of silos only as sharing a subpage URL structure or as tightly interlinked pages? For example, domain.com slash target page subpage one, domain.com slash target page subpage two, verse domain.com slash target page, domain.com slash subpage one. I'm not sure I understand this version. Do you have it over here? So, I mean, I look at it more at this way. You know, you have kind of like a topic here and then subtopics of that right here. That, I mean, that's the way I look at it. How do you know which level of social explosion to use for which site? How much is safe and how much dangerous? Um, I mean, you can use social explosion as you please, Kyle. I usually always do high. I use it on pretty much all my money sites, all my PBNs. Um, I bought 100,000 credits, which was $800, and it literally lasts me about four or five months, something like that. And, and I do a lot. So I mean, you can get any package and then just kind of buy more credits if you need to and just cancel your subscription just so you have those credits in place. And it just depends on what you're doing. Most of you are going to need nowhere near what I use. Would you 301 redirect the PBN to a money site when the PBN has been used before by SEOs as a 301 redirect and when everything else is okay with the domain? Uh, personally, I wouldn't, Sebastian. I can't really recommend that. It really depends on the situation. So I'm just, to, to make everyone sane, I'm going to say no for that. All right, I bought a $12 expired domain through GoDaddy Auctions about one month ago. I set up and add a welcome post in one article three days ago, and it's still not indexed. I submitted the site, I made it, submitted it to the index service and command center yesterday. Does that mean Google penalized it? What should I do next? I uh, just give it time, Jeff. Um, three days is not a, a deal breaker. Sometimes it takes a week or two for mine every once in a while. So I would give it another few days and uh, check it again. All right. All right, do you use fake names to sign up for different hosting accounts? Is a footprint to register PBN hosting accounts with your real name? I do not, Kyle. Uh, some people will. You know, if you're extra paranoid, you can do that. I personally don't, and I've had no problem with it. There's nothing wrong with being paranoid. Um, you know, if you want to take that extra step, it can only help. But at the same time, I don't think that's ever going to be a problem. My, that's my opinion. Do you use a new email for each hosting account? Last week, I saw a webinar by Becker where he said, it's dangerous to use the same email to sign up for hosting accounts. Again, I haven't done that. So I look at that as an invasion of privacy. If, if uh, hosting accounts are revealing my personal information like that, then that's uh, that's a problem. Are comment links as powerful as contextual links? One of my auction domains had comment backlinks on some strong, powerful sites. Are these strong enough, or should I try to stick with contextual backlinks when researching the backlinks of an auction domain? I mean, it can be just as strong, Dave. Uh, the problem with comment backlinks is usually you're not going to get keywords in there, um, especially for, you know, when you're linking to your money site. But, I mean, if you're buying a PBN, has some, some strong comment backlinks, that's fine. 
But, you know, the problem with comments for sending to a money site is usually you're just using it for, like, you know, kind of to expand your anchor text more. And, yeah, and of course, power your site. But, but yeah, I mean, they can have plenty of strength. And the other problem with block comments is a lot of sites where it's powerful like that, they'll have a ton of, a ton of links on the site. there will be, like, a ton of uh, comments. So, I mean, there's downsides to them. But, yeah, they can be just as powerful. On the same hand, I don't, I don't think anything's better than a contextual link. Overall. All right, I won three domains on Namejet, and the register is Network Solutions. I changed the who is to use fake personas, but now the domain transfer is locked, so I can't change the registrar. I heard you say to avoid Network Solutions. I won't be able to make the transfer before one month. What can I do in the meantime? Should I avoid using these PBNs, or can I use them, but only on different money sites? I would wait, Celine. That's my advice. I've been screwed so many times by network solutions stuff uh, that I just don't use them at all. If I get domains there, I'll transfer them out. How do you back up your PVN sites? I've lost all content on a couple of PVNs due to bad hosting services. What tool, software, or system do you use to back up your sites? I don't actually, Dave. Um, you can talk to someone about that in the uh, Facebook group, but I haven't really done that. I haven't had too many problems with it. I've lost a few, uh, but... It's, it's really had no effect on me from, like, losing PBN sites. Is there any way to perform the penalty test with websites that have a dash in them? I mean, yeah, they'll, they can still pass the bash, and it's just it seems they it's harder for them to pass for, for some reason. So, I mean, you can add in the title more. You can add in more title-related stuff and see if it passes for that. Uh, so, you know, See the see the penalties check stuff I did in the Q and A webinar. I kind of I go into that in more detail as well in that. All right, from Steve, does Google view Web 2.0s that link to a site as spam or in the same vein as a PVN, or do they look at it as a genuine link? Even if it is obvious manually that the Web 2.0 is owned by the person that owns the money site, basically do we need to make the Web 2.0 look like it is owned by another person? I don't know how Google looks at it. Um, I don't think anyone knows exactly how they look at it. But, I mean... If it's obvious that they own the Web 2.0, I, I, I really don't think that's a problem. Uh, as long as it's, that's not like across all your backlinks, I don't see how that's really a problem. Because if you think about it, the way that Web 2.0 is going to power whatever it's linking to is the links going to that Web 2.0. So as long as that Web 2.0 is being powered correctly, then there's no there's no problem with that Web 2.0 being owned by the same person and linked to the money site because the links going to the Web 2.0 property are legit. You get what I'm saying? And that's what's kind of powering the money site. If you just have a Web 2.0 with no power to it pointing to a money site, I mean, it's not really going to do anything for you. So that Web 2.0 still has to be powered through some type of legitimate links. When we embed YouTube videos in the PBN, do they get picked up by Ahrefs, Majestic, etc. as backlinks? Um... I think they do sometimes, and it comes up as uh, the anchor text has no image, if I remember correctly. I don't know. I'll have to look into that on some videos I have embedded and see if they show up. Because a lot of times I'm blocking Spider Spanker, uh, um, or I'm blocking you know, the, the, uh, the bots with Spider Spanker. So I haven't checked on that in a while. I'm not totally sure, Pratik. But I think they might show up as anchor text, no text. I'm not totally positive, though. If you built PBN links to a page, and then change the page URL, but add a 301 redirect, do you lose the value of the PBN link, or is that okay? Um, as long as you add a 301 redirect, it would be fine, Kyle. I mean, it would, you know, it would transfer over to the new page that you're 301ing to. Do we need to have a plugin on PBN to deactivate Google Fonts? I never do. Uh, so let's say no. I'm trying to rank a website for launch jacking. Even if there is no search volume for the product name, is it okay to just build out 
just build plenty of length with the same type of anchor, product, product review, by product, or do I need, or do I risk some kind of over optimization? The website I use is an expired domain that already have a lot of branded anchor tags. It, I gotta say that it depends. Um, you should be okay, Celine, but with a with a search term with no search volume, just be careful. Uh, don't. I wouldn't do any of the same anchor text twice, uh, especially early on, until you see where you start ranking. But I, I mean, doing that, you sh you should be fine, Celine. Not in all cases, but you should you should be fine doing that. It's always hard to say without an exact uh, example. All right, I have an EMD, but I plan on making up a fake company name for the site to make it more like a real company. Do you think this will confuse Google? I know you guys will make the EMDA brand a lot of times. For example, waterheaterrepairc.com. Company name is Williams Plumbing. No, I think that's fine to do, Jamie. I don't, I don't see any problem with that. I don't think you'll have any problems there. All right, from Celine. Also, when you use an expired domain for a money site, is it recommended to keep building branded anchors even if it already has a lot of branded anchors? It depends how many links I'm doing, Celine. Um, you know, if I'm doing a good amount, I will still work them in here and there. And I'll do a lot of stuff like, you know, name a money site dash keyword. I'll work in stuff like that, too. So that way you have, you know, you're building branded anchor text with your keyword related stuff. So I'll work in stuff like that as well. But it depends how many how many links I'm needing, how competitive it is, Celine. And sometimes I will, sometimes I won't. It just depends. I'm checking expired domains in archive.org. What does it mean when you see a redirect like domain.com redirects to www.domain.com or some other subdomain? Should sites that show up as redirected in the past be avoided as PBNs? Um, not necessarily. It depends what it was being redirected to for me usually. If it's something like this, um, where it's kind of like the same domain name, I, th it's, I think it's just like a branding issue that was being redirected. But if something where it's being like redirected to, you know, like some type of affiliate site or some SEO type thing, then you might want to be a little careful, careful there. Um, sometimes I'll just stay away from those because there's so many sites out there that I don't even want to take a chance. But I mean, technically, you should be okay there. But I, I mean, I, personally, I will stay away from some of those. I mean, they, if it was being redirected to something that was, you know, spammy, like, you know, Viagra, like a Viagra site or an affiliate site, there could be something going on there. Um, so it's up to you what you want to do. A lot of times I will skip them unless I think it's like a real, it's, it has a really good chance of being a good site. You know, I'll put it up, do the penalty check and see what happens. So, I mean, there's just so many sites out there. You don't need to take a risk like that. Most people don't. Or if I'm ranking several inner pages at once for different cities, do I plan out anchor text ratio percent and anchor text variations for each main domain and inner URL separately? Do I plan out anchor ratio and anchor text variations? I mean, you, you can, David. Um, a lot of times I don't really plan ahead too far. I mean, I just kind of move as I go. Like, I'll see, that's kind of one of the reasons we move slow with our anchor text is you can send a specific link. You can see what the anchor text says, and then, or, or I mean, you can see how it moves for whatever anchor text you use, and then you can kind of pick your next plan from there. You know what I mean? So I don't really plan ahead, like all my anchor text ahead. So I kind of see how it reacts to the anchor text I did, and then however it reacts, I'll do my next anchor text based on that. So, I mean, hopefully that answers your question there. been noticing that some PBN posts will index and some will not. 
Have you been doing anything specific to get the PBM post to all index? Adding more content, always add images and YouTube videos, social explosion, error linking. No, I mean, I haven't had a problem with that, Cliff. I don't know if you're, are you using uh, auction domains or expired domains or what? I mean, I'm using mostly auction domains and I haven't had a problem with that. From David, I set up a PBN and thought I had Spares Banker installed, but the PBN showed up anyway in my backlinks. We recommend I do with this link, disavow with Google or another tool. Don't worry about showing up, David. Um, there's there's a lot of hosts out there who have problems installing Spider Spanker, where I just don't use it, and I I just don't worry about if if it's showing up. I mean, it's just it's just a precaution. Like if someone sees that link, they can just look into it. You know, like a, a competitor. And usually it's not a big deal. Um, I mean, I try to hide them if I can, but if I can't hide them, I don't worry about it. So I wouldn't worry about that. Oops, missed my uh, screenshot. One second. There we go. All right, from Dave. I followed your Iowa City SEO OTS series and created an exact match domain two months ago. I've built this basic social property such as Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, etc. I've built a few PBM links, URL and keyword anchors to these social properties. The site is not ranking at all for its major keywords. The links have been placed for about two weeks now. There's one keyword ranking at number 85, though. I know it's hard to tell with just the above data, but do you think I can start sending PBM links to the money site now? Not an exact keyword like plumber in New York, but maybe something like using your string technique, then this is really low competition. There's been a change recently, guys, where... New sites are just taking longer to rank. It seems like ever since maybe it was like beginning of April or May, where there's like some type of new sandbox where new sites are just really slow to rank. Um, so, I mean, it makes sense. Why would they – like they, they have such good search results already. Why would they allow new, a new site to climb up to the top directly? And also it seems like links are taking even longer to kick in than, than they were before. So, Dave, I mean, you don't necessarily need to do that. You could just be patient. Um, so your link's been placed for two weeks now. What I would do, since it's already been two weeks, give it, or not, give it 30 days. Usually 30 days is when I'll start to see some type of movement if I don't see it initially. So just give it a little longer. I mean, a brand new site, I wouldn't be too worried about that, Dave. Two, two months old is not very old at all. I mean, you could send PBNs directly to the money site. Just make sure you know what you're doing, all right? So I just don't want you to mess it up if you're if you're unsure what you're doing. All right, follow up to Kyle's question. Do you use fake names for Sonos for your domain registration? Some of them, Rob, but not much. I haven't used fake in a while, to be honest, but I do have some of them mixed in in my network. All right, I'm putting out 20 new YouTube videos out. A week linking back to my money site in the description is this safe and should I mix it up to my inner pages too? 20 new YouTube views a week. I've never done that many, Lior, but I don't see how that would necessarily be unsafe. I mean those are those are no file links from uh from high DA, so you, you should be totally fine there. And I mean, why not mix it up? You know, you can send some to inner pages, absolutely. If it you know if it has to do with what your inner page is about. I don't see any problem doing that. How do you get comment backlinks for your money site? Is there a service that you recommend? Right now I'm using PBN, Citation, Social, Press Releases for backlinks. I'd like to diversify my links a bit more. Any other type of links that you use to rank a local client? Um, so you can uh, go to the – go log into your members area, and there's a, a section on Scrapebox, and John up, James Upjohn talks about um, – how to use Scrapebox to to uh, to get blog comments, but also in that you can learn how to do them manually because he what he shows in there you can learn how to do them manually. So check out that video and you, you can learn some stuff about uh, comment backlinks in there. Is there any way to know why a site was de-indexed if you aren't using Webmaster Tools? Could lack of recent post be a cause? 
Uh, I've never had a site be the index for a lack of recent posts, Jerry, as long as it has a decent amount of content on already. Um, usually the indexing is caused from type some type of like spam type thing, like in a pure spam penalty. Uh, where that's they know you're using the site for for SEO purposes, uh, like very obvious, or to manipulate the search engines. Uh, so, I mean, usually I know why. Like, if I get a site the index, I can track why it was the index. But if you're asking like for like a clear cut answer, like for the normal person, I mean, the only way you can really find out is Webmaster Tools, and they'll tell you exactly what it is. But I mean, usually I can identify it just knowing. You know, kind of tracking what happened, and I'll know what what it was without even looking. Is it a good idea to make a new PBN and post five articles right away, but only have one post linking to my money site rather than the usual post per week method? That's totally fine, Leo. You can do that. Nothing wrong with doing them all at once. Do you provide SEO services, PBN link rentals, anything at all outside of coaching? No, Dave. Um, I don't. I don't like sharing my uh, PBN networks and all that, and it really doesn't make sense for me to do SEO for other people, just because I do well with affiliate, and that's what I like doing. So, no, I don't do any of that. Was a decent free tool to check where a site ranks. As far as free, Rob, I'm not sure because I, I use paid rank trackers. But again, in my Q and A webinar in my section, you can look at you know what rank tracker I use and kind of get my my feedback there. But as far as free, I'm not aware of that, Rob. Is there any problem with a low cost dollar hosting? My thinking is that these hosts are used by SEOs, PBNs, and low end companies. Yeah, that's why I stay away from them, Danny, uh, just because they don't blend in. You know, I don't think they blend in for some of the reasons that you're you're talking about. You know what I mean? So I, I stay away from those personally. Can we go back and add another link to a post that has been up on a PBN for a while? I When I add a new link, Keith, I usually either... I usually just add a whole new post. Um, if I am adding it to a cur to a current post for any reason, I'll add more content within that post with the link. If I'm going to do that, I won't just go and add a link w without any new content. I rebranded my city SEO site to a brand new domain. I did a 301 wildcard redirect from the old to the new domain. It's been a month for some keywords. My old domain are still ranking ahead of my new domain. Do you have any recommendations on the proper way to redirect the site when rebranding a client site and keeping the current rankings? Again, it's just it's going to take a while to kick in, David. Um, again, and you're using a, a totally new domain, so even though you're redirecting, you know, an old domain to a new domain, it's going to take time for that new domain to be trusted. And that's been my experience. So you're just going to have to give that time. And then remember, you do lose a little bit of power with a redirect, so you're likely going to. Uh, you know, come back a little a little lower than you were before. It also depends on what the keywords were in the old domain compared to the new domain for the for the optimization. So there's a lot of factors in play there. But I'll just give that time to uh, kick in. Google Google has really slowed things down. Uh, you know, with indexing links, uh, you know, ranking new site, they've really just slowed things down. So it's just taking more patience now with a lot of stuff. Are there any good free tools that show the different types of visitors to our sites, bots and junk visitors versus actual visitors? Uh, free tools, I don't know, Rob, uh, but a lot of people use clicky.com, stuff like that, if they're not using Google Analytics. I mean, Google Analytics is free, but you just have to be careful with it. It appears that GoDaddy is one of the largest hosting companies. Is there a reason not to use them? Uh, no, I wouldn't say so, Danny. I think a big host is good. You know, If a lot of people are using it, it's, it's a good thing for, for a couple different reasons. All 
All right, so to follow up Kyle and Rob's question, do you mostly use privacy protection since you haven't used much fake info these days? Yes, mostly use privacy, Dave. I created a site using a near exact match domain last year and it is ranking on page two for most of my keywords. After watching your URL and anchor text video again this morning, I believe it's over optimized. Can I just go ahead and change my URLs and resubmit the site max to fix this? Not necessarily. Um, it depends why it's over. I mean, the the URLs you're talking about are probably contributing to the over optimization, but it also depends on everything else, John. Like, you know, what your anchor text is. Uh, you know, what, what, how much you have it on the page and all that. So before you change your URLs, what you can try doing is under-optimizing your titles and content and see if that helps. And then you can try the URLs if you want or, you know, adding in more generic type backlink stuff, uh, anchor text. Can you relax your standards on anchor text optimization when you send anchor text that you are trying to rank an internal page for on an established site to the home page. Justin is just as an example, if you were trying to rank an internal silo page titled small dog cages on dog.com, could you send the anchor text small dog cages a number of times to the site's home page? Um, again, it depends on the size of the keyword. See my FAQ webinar uh, for for proper optimization, Alex, and anyone else really. So you can understand proper optimization for how big a keyword is. But I, I generally follow the same rules that I talk about in that Q&A webinar, uh, whether it's home page or not. So, Because, uh, I mean, you, there's plenty of ways you can add in small doll cages without doing that exact bank of text. And, again, I talk about that in the, uh, the optimization part of the Q&A webinar. There's, there's time stamps for all that. If you have two money sites on the same shared hosting and two PBNs on the, on the same shared hosting, is the footprint to link PBN one to, to money site one, the other PBN to the other money site, or we will see that as one IP link to the same IP. I mean, the only way they're going to see is link the same IP link to the same IP is on linking twice to the same IP. I mean, as long as the two PBNs are on, you know, if you're saying two PBNs to one of these money sites, as long as they're on different hosting companies, uh, that's that's all that matters. So that's going to be two different IPs. Of course, these neither the, the money site couldn't be on either of these two hosting accounts either. So I'm not sure I totally understand your question, but as long as they're separated like that, it'll, it'll be fine. What do you have to pay attention to with Google Analytics? Um, well, I mean, you got to have your your site in some type of a Google account. So you just, if I was to use Google Analytics, I would create an account for each, each website I did. You know, if you're going to use Google Analytics at all, my recommendation is create an email for each account that you're using. All right, don't use the same stuff under the same email. I've just built my first MySidySEO.com site, linked my business Facebook and LinkedIn accounts, and have a few references example. How quickly do things actually work with Google? I know I won't rank into page one a week, but if I keep tossing citations, perhaps a few PPNs should I be good? Again, it depends on competition, Jeremy. There's a lot of stuff that goes into effect. Um, if you're doing a brand new site, it's going to take a little while now. Just new sites just taking longer to rank, uh, and it depends on how competitive whatever your whatever the site is is doing. You know, if it's like Chicago SEO, it's going to take a while. Whereas if it's something like a smaller town SEO, that will rank a lot quicker. So, a lot of a lot of things to go into if, how long it's going to take, and also, you know, what anchor text you use, how your optimization is, and all that. So, I mean, that's hard to to answer. To add to my earlier question where my new site is not ranking at all, 
I know you said to give it some time. So if I were to build PBN links after a month or so to my exact mesh domain, homerenovationphoenix.com, then if I start building PBN links slowly with anchors such as improvement Phoenix business, home renovation, et cetera, I found the main keyword. Do you think if I do all above a set of anchors in that order, it's pretty safe? I mean, yeah, that, that set of anchors is safe, Dave. Um, what you laid out here would be safe anchor text. You know, home improvement, Phoenix business, home renovation, home remodeling, visit site, local business in Phoenix, renovate your house, and then make you word. Yeah, I mean, that, that typically should be fine. I mean, it depends on the optimization of the rest of your site, but, but yeah, generally that should be fine. All right, I'm a beginner and new to OMG. Watch through your beta videos yesterday. You do a great job. Thank you. You're welcome, Debbie. At an insurance agency, and I've been working to move our website up in the ranking on Google. We have gone from page three to page one. Awesome. But there is an exclamation mark by our site when Google displays it. When I hover over the exclamation mark, it states that the site is suspicious. I have web root. Any ideas how this happens, but more so how I can fix this? I've not seen that, Debbie. I don't know if you have Webmaster Tools installed or not. It should say, give you, be giving you some type of message, I'm guessing. Uh, but I don't use Webmaster Tools a ton, so I'm not sure, Debbie. If you're part of the Facebook group, I would go in and ask that in there. You should get a response pretty quickly about that. I haven't seen that. or I mean, I probably have seen it, but I haven't seen it in a while. So I'm, I'm not totally positive on that, Debbie. That's awesome you went from page three to, to one. That's, that's great. All right, regarding your video for finding expired domains for money sites, you said it's important to get a domain that has mostly branded and generic anchor text. If the site name is a synonym like abcd.com, but a lot of anchor text is a synonym spelled out, but what those letters actually stand for are words that you are not relevant to this you want to use site for. Does this matter when thinking of using this site as a money site? Yeah, that made sense, Steve. That's, that's fine. It's still branded anchor text. The reason I like branded anchor text is because it shows natural linking. That, that's the main reason I like it. The second reason, of course, is for, you know, anchor text related stuff. But one of the main reasons I like to see branded anchor text is because it, I, I know it's good natural links in, in a lot of cases. Do you have any experience doing SEO for sites in multiple languages? I can translate content on my English site into Spanish and write for Spanish keywords. Would this trigger a duplicate content issue in Google's eyes? I do not, Alex, unfortunately. Sorry. I mean, you can ask that question on Facebook, but I have never done a site in multiple languages. So what time frame should I give to a future client for ranking purposes if he has a brand new site? Three months doesn't look realistic now. After the Google change you talked about earlier with the garage for local clients. I mean, you could talk to uh, Cotton about that, day, but me personally, I would give him at least six months, at least, with a brand new site. Or at least six months to show, you know, like page, you know, we'll have, we'll have you. I don't, I don't know exactly how Cotton does this, so I would ask him and do it exactly like he does. But sorry, I was trying to redo a screenshot. Um, but you could do something like you know three months to get to you know page five, something like that, or three months to get to page three. You could do something like that because it, it seems like new sites they can rank. It's not that they can't rank quickly. It's that they almost get caught on page two, three for for a little while, and then they they'll slowly move up. So it's like sometimes like weird sandbox. But but yeah, I mean you could do something like that where you say you know you'll see yourself on page two or three within six months, and then you know another six months you move up to page one or whatever. I would talk to Cotton about the proper the proper way to set that up because he's he's so good with client stuff. Do you ever put the original content from the expired domain to the new PBN? 
the original content and expired in 1983. Yes, Joanne. Um, I will use the uh, the site rebuilder in OMG Command Center, and I'll just use the old site, and I'll just rebuild the old site. So I will use that sometimes. I don't do it a ton, but I will use that. And it, just a kind of asterisk there, it's not totally legal to do that. When you buy a, a PBN, you don't own the old content, but, I mean, usually you're not going to have problems with it. But I just want to make sure people are aware that's not totally legal. I mean, you're not really going to get in trouble for it, but just be aware of that. All right, hi, Greg. Will you use a vSolid plugin with Director's Cut Skin? Thank you. Will you use a vSolid plugin? I would ask um, the, the guys who did the director's cut skin that question, Oleg. I don't have any uh, experience with, with combining those two. On a client money site that has a lot of content but no rankings, would you rebuild using silos versus leaving what's there and setting PBNs? Not necessarily, Danny. Depends on uh, how, how the site is. Um, a lot of times I won't even use silos, to be honest, unless it's like a really big topic that can be broken down. So, I mean, it, it really depends on the, on the situation. So, I mean, in most cases, probably not. I, I actually wouldn't, Danny. But I'm sure there's cases where I would. All right, read Debbie Brevis's question. Stephen Floyd or Cotton recently had her same question. Uh, red exclamation mark error message. They said they had seen the same error sometimes and ignored it, and it goes away. Never been a long-term issue. Okay. So that that comes from Cotton and Stephen. They've seen it. They ignored it. It went away. No long-term issue. So we got one more here. Let's put in any final questions now. We got one more currently. <clears throat> All right, from Majestic M. About content rebuilder, how do you set up WordPress dash admin? I try, but I can't set up logins. What 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 content rebuilder are you talking about, Majestic? You talking about the OMG command center thing? <clears throat> yes, you're talking about the OMG command center. So you actually got to upload the site. You, you're not, it, it's not going to be a WordPress site. You're kind of, you're uploading the files to, to your cPanel, okay? So you'll download the file that you get from, from the OMG Command Center, and then you're going to upload it to whatever host that you're putting it on. So you're not really installing WordPress and all of that. You're just uploading the files. And they should have directions on how to do that in the Command Center. There should be like step-by-step -step videos or something like that. So I'm going to give another 20 seconds for any final questions. we got one more from Joanne right now. No problem, Debbie. Yeah, thank you, Jay, for uh, putting that in, Debbie said. All right, so we got one last one from Joanne. And then we'll uh, get rolling here. All right. In WordPress, do you put the site address URL as www or just website.com? Obviously, for PBNs, I choose whatever version has more power, Joanne. But brand new sites, I'll do both. Um, usually, I'll, I think I'll pick www more, but I do do both. And I don't, I don't, I don't think it really matters which one you use. So, I mean, brand new sites, though, I'll do both, but I lean more towards this version here, the www version. All right. So, I think that is it. All right, yeah, looks like that is it for today. All right, guys, I'll get this recording over to David. Again, we have another session next Monday at 1, as always. Uh, and I will see you guys on the next one. Thanks for coming out and asking questions, guys. I'll talk to you all soon.